The sirens blared out the sorrow. One by one, a procession of first responders in Ontario's Durham region paid tribute to two longtime residents killed in the rampage and to the broken sons left behind. Don Madsen and Frank Gullinchen had just retired and moved to Nova Scotia. At the care facility where Madsen worked for decades, flags were lowered. The last send-off was so much happier. Former co-workers can't believe she's gone. When she came into the building, her residents were her family, and she treated them exactly like if they were family and her best friends. She's one in a million. Tragic outlines are still emerging. Lillian Hislop was on a regular walk when she was gunned down. She was a very nice lady, very quiet, um, private lady. She was very kind. Her friend says if only police had issued an alert to stay home. I do feel really strongly about that because I do feel that if we had received an alert of a sort, like an amber alert of this situation, that many people might have been spared. There's so much agony from the investigation and the silence around it too. Among the houses destroyed by the fire set by the gunman, one belonging to John Zal and Elizabeth Joanne Thomas. And my parents, they were angels. Justin Zal knew something was wrong when his mom didn't make her nightly call and didn't answer her phone the next day. I'm just a little sad, obviously. I'm upset. Uh, the system has let so many people down, man. It's ridiculous, you know. They are presumed dead. As the victim toll rises, scattered along a murderer's trail, pockets of grief for those already named and ones now confirmed. Gina Goulet, a cancer survivor who loved to dance. Corey Ellison, described as a generous soul always willing to help. And Joey Weber, a father of three committed to his family. Sketches of lives and salutes to them and to those left huddling in grief again tonight. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.